When you hear FM synthesis, what do you usually think of? You think of the DX7, dubstep, psytrance, dance music, the fact that practical FM is actually closer to phase modulation and FM is mostly a misnomer, or the fact that it's just insanely complicated to program. Recently, GeForce released a new synth called Halogen. It's an FM synth that promises to make FM synthesis more intuitive and more easy. Since, as they claim, FM synthesis is unintuitive and unpredictable. Now, as someone who has worked for almost 12 years in FM synthesis as an amateur sound designer, I get the unintuitive part, but I don't agree that it's unpredictable. In fact, if you spend so much time with it, it will become quite predictable. In fact, it could become so predictable that you would recognize patterns in how to make certain sounds and how to make usable sounds. But I'm not showing halogen today. Nope. I'm just gonna go over FM ratios, this one particular aspect of FM synthesis. And this is not a tutorial, it's not a walkthrough, it is just an insane rambling of my observations over the years. Yeah, that's, that's it. So what the hell even is an FM ratio? It's how FM synths are tuned. Where conventionally synthesizers will use semitones and scents for their coarse and fine tuning, FM synthesizers will typically use harmonic overtone frequencies represented in integers or numbers with decimal points. Ratios are used because the frequencies that you can pick for your tunings can go very, very high. This way you can get more harmonically rich sounds when you modulate other oscillators. Also, Early FM synthesizers mostly had only sine waves to work with, and a sine wave is just the fundamental frequency. There's no harmonic overtones there, unless you add them with modulation. This is opposed to, say, a sawtooth wave that you might get on a subtractive synthesizer, which has all integer harmonics from 1 to infinity. Well, theoretically infinity. Tuning ratios are used instead of frequency because, well, just like semitones, do you really want to think about what frequency 4938 is in a note? Do you even know what note that is? Because I don't. Now let's talk about ratios for a second. A ratio tuning of 1 means that the frequency matches the note that you're playing. A equals 440, A1 one is A equals 440. A2 two would be an octave above A equals 440 because a 2 in the harmonic series is an octave up. A3 would be an octave and 7 semitones and so on and so on and so forth. FM ratios usually show two oscillators related to one another. The first number in the ratio is typically the tuning of the modulator wave, and the second number is the carrier wave. So a two to one would be a modulator tuned an octave above the tuning of the carrier wave. Or if you have one to one, then both the modulator and the carrier have the same tuning. I've heard so many times over the years that FM is too complicated and too crazy to even get into. Well, hopefully I can at least dispel some confusion, at least with the ratios part of FM synths. So uh, let's get into it. One to one. This is your basic FM ratio. It's the simplest and the easiest one to remember. It can give you a variety of different useful sounds in a number of different applications. Uh, I have here a little bit of modulation going into the carrier wave and you can hear what it sounds like here. And if you give it more, you're gonna get a much more intense, much more intense, very bright sound and a little bit thin as well. But if you go the other way, you get a much warmer, much more mellow sound. So even though it is just one tuning ratio, you can get a bit out of this sound just by changing the modulation amount. With this ratio, you can use it for sounds like basses, bells, brass, and keys. Two to one. This is another easy-ish one to remember, and it's basically the FM equivalent of a square wave. And it's useful for a square synth-like sounds. Uh, you could use it also for basses. For percussion.
for woodwind type sounds. Anything that gives you that sort of hollow squarish type sound, like this. Want some smooth, jazzy, guitar-like tones? Three to one might work for you. It's also good for harp-like sounds as well. Three point five to one. This is a ratio you want to use if you're in the mood for Taco Bell. Or if you want to be visited by the Undertaker. Or if you want Iceman to be your wingman anytime. Or if you just want someone to beat it. Use this ratio too. Four to one. It's like two to one, but a little bit brighter. Five to one, six to one, seven to one. These ratios are where we start to get into more metallic type sounds, and they're really good for short melodic percussion type stuff. Eight to one. Now, from this point on, we're going to be getting into much more metallic sounds. A good rule of thumb to remember is the higher and higher you pitch your modulator, you're going to get into more metallic, more bell-like sounds like this. That's eight. You get the picture. Now, we saw the ratios that had a higher pitch in the modulator than the carrier, but what if we were to reverse that and have tuning ratios where the higher pitch is in the carrier wave? What do those sound like? Now, this is a ratio of one to two, so the modulator is going to be at one and the carrier is going to be pitched to two, and it sounds like this. Sounds almost like a bright, kind of cheap organ, or even a choir-like sound. We can hear that here. One to three, we're getting a little bit brighter with our sound here as well. might be good for a vocal-like sound, but it could also be used in a sort of weird woodwind type sound as well. Very nasally. This is much more nasally sound than if we were to have a ratio of 3 to 1 instead. Now a good rule of thumb to have when we're dealing with a higher pitched carrier than a modulator is that the sounds are going to get progressively brighter and thinner and more nasally, and we're going to hear less and less of the fundamental tone in these sounds. Now right now I'm going to get a little bit into DX7 territory, but that's because I wanted to show this. Mostly what I've been showing you are modulator carrier pairs and no more oscillators actually being modulated here. But with this I kind of wanted to highlight a difference between modulating one carrier wave and then modulating another modulator because that can also change your sound too. Now in this example I have a number of different oscillators set up. I have the modulator with the ninth harmonic modulating this carrier wave down here, which is tuned to one. And as I showed before, it makes a bit of a metallic sound. But it's also modulating this up here. And if I were to turn this off, we can see that this is modulating this waveform right here, which is actually another modulator that is then modulating the first uh, oscillator up here 
And that sounds like this. So if I were to turn this off, it's a one to one plus the nine. So it's a nine to one to one. And it makes a different sound. And if I were to show you what the keys sound like with that kind of setup, we have this. It's bright, but it doesn't sound as metallic because it's not going strictly into one carrier wave. It's going into another modulator, and that higher harmonic is then modulating the carrier wave. And down here, it's just bell-like. So all together, sounds like that. And this is really just to help illustrate that depending on where you're actually sending your oscillators to modulate the other ones is that you could get slightly different timbres using the same ratios. So if you add another modulator somewhere in the mix and, and have that being modulated by another modulator, you can get a different character of sound. This is an extreme case of 20 one to one. Turn off this to hear just the modulator into the carrier, 20 to 1. 20 to 1 makes it sound really bright and really metallic. But if I turn that carrier wave off, I just have 20 into 1 into 1. So you can still hear the brightness, but it's affecting the sound in a different way because it's modulating another modulator before that modulator wave is going into the carrier wave. But the ratio hasn't changed, I've just added another oscillator into the mix. Why am I just playing that progression? God. I'm terrible at demoing stuff. Whoops. Here's another case where you can take a set of oscillators and have them tuned differently, like have the carrier wave set to 9, and one of the modulators set to 1, and another modulator set to... What was it? 14, I think? What I set it to? Yeah, 14. And we get something kind of like this. Something that sort of growls, if you will. So what's going on there is I have envelopes actually affecting what the modulators are actually doing. So if I turn this off, that is that is the 14th harmonic being affected by this envelope, so it, it has a bit of decay. So it starts high and it comes down low, but this one is actually being affected by a different uh, envelope and it's actually going up, so we can hear that effect sort of ramping in. I forget what that one is. Okay, just another sound like that. There are many more tunings and ratio combinations that you can use and a number of different modulation options that you could use as well. Hopefully that gives you at least a starting point in FM synthesis and doesn't make it too terribly daunting, even though I did mostly just cover the ratios and there are so many other aspects to FM synthesis that make it what it is. It doesn't have to be overly complex, it doesn't have to be weird, and it doesn't have to be something that is useless or bizarre. There are definitely usable and practical sounds that you can get out of FM. It just takes a little bit of imagination and understanding what is predictable in here. Because once you get the ratios down, you can go, oh, I know what I can do with this, and I can know what I can do with this, and I know what I can do with this, and with this, and with this, and so on. Now, mind you, I did mention earlier that I've been doing this for a number of years. So in no way, shape, or form are you going to get this immediately, unless you do and you're a fucking genius, but it's going to take you time to learn this and learn all the ins and outs of it, and there is nothing wrong with that. It just takes you starting now. So, I wish you the best, and have fun making these sounds. See ya.